Well, the time has come that I need to break some trail to tree line. And uh, that trail hasn't been broken out at all this year, so uh, it should be fairly exciting. Got the machine warming up here, plenty of fuel. And I uh, got some heat in the fuel to help deal with the uh, inevitable, um, you know, super fine powder snow that blows its way in. Let's check the temperature over here. Sitting, uh, looks like, at a nice, comfortable 18 below. Well, I'm going to hit the powdery trail and uh, bring you all along with me. Looks like my first obstacle here. Sometimes these just spring back up in the air and you knock the snow off. Sometimes not. The whole cluster of them. Barber chair. Yeah, uh, looks clear around the corner, the next hundred yards anyway. Doesn't bode well that I'm only maybe 200 yards from the homestead. All right. Some of you were wondering why I didn't break this trail out sooner before the snow got so deep. 
It's because there was some wolf activity going on up above tree line. And I didn't want to pack the wolves a nice, easy trail straight to the homestead. And when I didn't hear the wolves anymore and when the flock of ravens that was following the wolf pack moved on, I uh, waited about a week and then I figured, yeah, it's safe to pack the trail up there. I let the wolves tend to their wolf business and uh, I tend to my business. They leave me alone, I leave them alone. And that arrangement has worked out well so far. Tipped me right over. I thought that was just, you know, a drift of snow. Well, guess I gotta cut this thing and get this. Okay. Just it over a little bit. Oh hell, I might be able to just drive out. Yeah, I better stomp it out. I just kind of think it'd be under a lot of tension and it could spring up and, and kind of hit me. So I'm kind of on my guard here and sawing through it, uh, letting it adjust to its new reality. Don't want to get hit in the face. All right. There's that. I think I can get under that next one. I know you Canadians out there who are like born on snow machines are laughing at me. <sighs> but I really never started using these things until I moved out to the bush. <sighs> All right. Let's see if she'll drive out of this. Come on. Kill switch. Stomp down in front of this thing a little ways. Give it an easier time. Get up out of the hole. Make sure the ski's not underneath any kind of sticks or anything. <clears throat> All right, let's try that. Get it straightened up a little more. Oh. Whew, now I'm warm. Okay. There we go. This thing's having some kind of trouble. Back it up just a little bit. Off again. Snow machines are just incredibly valuable for breaking out a trail. And uh, after I've made the initial run, I'll usually hitch up a sled, put some weight in it, and drive over it to pack down a nice trail that you can ski on, you can snowshoe on, um, which is a lot more pleasant, a lot better for hunting and trapping and, and always driving on the snow machine. I'm not trying to cover 20, 30, 50 miles in a day. Just break out some local trails, uh, you know, to have somewhere to go, get some exercise. 
and uh, maybe catch a couple of fur bears or a grouse or two. And of course the trails are essential for getting firewood or collecting some of the other forest products that we like to gather to make crafts or other things out of to sell. Man, this thing does not want to idle. Kind of getting worried. This thing doesn't want to idle at all like it's wanting to die. Um, and uh, anyway, I'll let it rest for a second. It's smelling kind of funny too. Like maybe I got some bad gas or something. Not. Not myself personally, but the machine. You look. I imagine the dogs will come find me at some point. They were off on some dog errand chasing a squirrel or something. And if any of you out there have never done this before, it's very physical, breaking trail in, in deep snow. Like, I'm breaking a sweat. Um, I don't want to get too sweaty, so I'm taking a break here. The machine's kind of acting up. It's not wanting to idle, and uh, it's acting a little funny. So either something's wrong with it, or it's got some, some bad fuel, or maybe the powder snow is infiltrating into the air intake somehow and starting to you know, choke up the carburetor, and uh, at any rate, uh, I'm, I'm close to home. I'm just going to go up the tree line and back down, so hopefully it makes it. I don't have to end up working on it out here, and uh, let's see. All right, I think it's probably cooled down enough, getting ready. Take another run at it. I got some hills coming up, so I'm gonna gonna have to really ride to make it up those hills. I already felt it bogged out. I just didn't have enough speed there. Ah. See how long it'll idle for. I gotta pack down path for it. Get some momentum here. Try to get up on top of this stuff. some more packing and shoveling I think here
All right, let's try that. See what Shovel out in front of the machine a little bit. See if I can get out of this mess. Yeah, okay. Now I bet we go. Well, I made it a bit further and I've diagnosed my problem. I'm pretty sure somehow snow is getting into the air intake system and then it's freezing in the carburetor. So the engine's ingesting a lot of water. And uh, when I do brake trail, I put some, some heat, which is a gas line dryer, water absorber, it's alcohol essentially into the uh, gas tank to kind of help prevent this problem. But what I've got going on now is that my throttle is stuck open a little bit, just a bit. But since the throttle's freezing open, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, getting in. Oh, you can hear there, it just dropped back to idle. So, uh, I don't really have a good place to turn around for another quarter mile or so. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta go forward a little bit further and, and then every once in a while I just gotta stop and let it thaw out and that heat should keep the throttle, you know, it should help dissolve some of that ice and keep the throttle from sticking open. And luckily it's nice deep powder going uphill, the machine's not gonna really take off on me. But, uh, you know, I, this thing's only, what, four or five years old? And it needs, you know, it seems like it needs a bunch of work already. And uh, I tell you what, the parts for these things are more than the parts for your car. It's kind of stupid. You can tell that the companies really make their money on the parts. And uh, when they work good, they work good. But well, I've almost made it to where I can turn around. But I've been having to brake trail manually here up this steep incline, which I could probably drive straight up at high speed except that it has a couple of sharp turns in it which i'm just not a good enough rider to commit to the amount of speed i need so i'm gonna uh oh look at that fresh martin tracks those are fresh too So anyway, I'm just breaking trail manually up the hill just so there's a little bit of a track. That's all it takes. And then the machine goes right up on its own. <clears throat> there it is down there waiting for me. It's, uh, it's definitely running better. I think, you know, it just has to get that any moisture that was in there worked through or what yeah look at those nice fresh martin tracks fur prices are projected to be really low this year so probably won't do too much trapping but i'll set a few anyway 
I've never trapped up here towards tree line, so I can set a few up here on my next trip up. All right, let me just break all the way up to the top here where there's another sharp corner so you can't you can't hit the top going fast but this hill is the crux so i'm gonna head back down breaking out a new section and uh see if i can make it up it a little easier going downhill Make sure I pack this corner good so I can lean into it. Alright. See if I can make it up the hill here. Got the battery. We'll hold out on the camera. That's a workout. Well, as you can see, the old aluminum horse got me up here. It's running good now. It must have worked that bad stuff through its system. And uh, I'm going to get turned around and head for home. Now I got a trail broke up the tree line. Everything gets a little easier. And, uh, well... You know, I wish I had a better camera, one with replaceable batteries, because I was hauling ass up here, trying to stay on top of the powder, and there was a sleeper rock here underneath the powder I couldn't see. I hit that thing. I went flying. I just got really lucky I didn't land in front of the machine, or it didn't roll on me. 